2024 and I think home security is on top of mind for a lot of folks out there. But not only that, but 24 seven monitoring such as smart home security systems where you can have that notification sent right to your phone. And Ring is one of the best companies out there for that. A lot of folks have the doorbells. They've been around a long time, very proven company, good quality products. And of course you have like Blink as well. You have different door cameras. You have the cameras that are for driveways. You have floodlight cameras I've done in the past with Ring having their own floodlight camera where you need a power source. And of course you have the smart lighting and all that stuff for your patio, for your driveway, things like that. But with an exterior wall like this, there's no power source. So no one I would say to switch out the floodlight or the power box out here to a Ring floodlight camera system, which I've done a full install and review on. I'll drop that up here. But without a power source, you need solar. So you can go cheap, go with just a cheap solar motion sensor type of setup, which I've done before. They're not great, they're cheap for a reason. Ring is a good product in terms of they do last much longer. And you can actually go and grab this right here, which is the Ring Solar Floodlight. Comes with one battery. So you can just switch out the batteries, kind of a dumb light setup where it just, just turns on and off with motion. Then you recharge it when you need to. Or you can, of course, hook up the solar panel and it'll try to keep it charged. You might have to take it off depending on how active it is. But if you wanna link it up to the rest of your products on the Ring app, you're gonna need the Ring Bridge. I believe it's like 90 bucks for the actual floodlight itself with the battery, and another like 20 bucks to get the bridge, to get that combo. And I'll drop links down below from everything you need from Amazon, from the tools to all these here, to even spare batteries and things like that, depending on how you wanna set this up. This would be great to light up a dark side of the house with the trash cans. So we're gonna dive into what's in the box. Oh, what's in the box? What do you need? Get the install done and talk about the product and all the features. So let's dive in. Let's open up the Ring Bridge first because you're gonna to wanna to have this set up first to connect to that Ring app. And of course, easy install, USB powered. This is something you'll put in your house, ideally between your router and all your smart devices that you're looking to connect. That way you have a nice bridge there across. See what I did there? <laughs> nice, simple presentation. You have your bridge device right here. Tools. Mount, if you wanna mount this on a wall or behind a desk or up high or something just to kinda of have it wherever you want to kinda of bridge that gap there. In the toolbox here, you have your power brick, cable, mounting screws, and of course, tucked away in here is your solar panel with the cord to plug into the bottom of the floodlight. And then over here, you have your mount for the solar panel, as well as charging cable, mounting screws. Now the coolest part about Ring products is how easy they are to use. So you have right here, the spot to plug in that solar panel, or you can leave it covered up. Either way, everything is articulate, up, down, straight down, straight to the side. Motion sensor, very easy to move around. You have your mount that is, that is once attached to the wall. You can simply slide this off and on, which is good because inside of here is your battery. One of two, so you have one battery in here, which has a release tab right here. See how that works right there. You can buy a spare battery, but you will want to remove these because we're going to take the charging cable provided, which is just a USB micro there, and plug this in to charge this up all the way. And then you can place it back in here. And of course you could get a spare battery. And then you have a way to actually have more power than just the solar. And if you don't have a lot of sun for a couple of days, a spare battery might do you good. So let's go charge this up and then we'll also set up the bridge here, and then we'll set up and install the floodlight. Just gonna let that battery charge. I have a closet right between the router and where that solar floodlight's gonna be. So I'm gonna put that bridge almost center of where I need it. And then I'm just gonna go make a mark here. Take my level. Could eyeball it, but honestly, make it nice, right? Now it comes with these crappy 
drywall anchors right here. And for as light of a job as this is, these might work, but I have almost entirely switched to these right here. These are called togglers, and these are tap and screw mounts for drywall. So let me show you. And they're much, much better. Line them up where they need to go. You can get a whole bag of these on Amazon too. Get your Phillips and your drill. You want to make them nice and flush, just like you would with a regular drywall anchor. And these are much, much nicer, much sturdier. Now these come with longer screws for the toggle mount, the toggler. It should fit nice and flush. Line it up. There you have it. There's a button called set up a device on the ring app. You're going to want to scroll down to smart lighting. I'm ready to scan. You want to scan the back of your bridge. It should say ring bridge detected. Set up your Wi-Fi on it. Plug in your bridge. Mount it. Continue with setup mode. Wait for it to flash blue. This is why Ring makes it so easy to just run through the settings. Join your network. It'll connect for a bit. It takes a couple of minutes with these things. It's going to want you to turn on your local network permissions for the Ring app. It's going to have you run through setting up and connecting your Ring bridge to your current Wi-Fi after you type in your password. It takes a little while. Then it's going to take about maybe 10 minutes to update. So let it update, get that firmware up to date. Once setup is complete, everything is updated. Should have a nice solid blue light right there for connectivity. So the bridge is good to go. Let's go outside and get this floodlight installed and set up. Now you're gonna take your mounting plate for the floodlight. Find a spot exactly where you want it, right about here. Take your level, check to make sure everything is good. Now this is hardy plank going into plywood on the inside there. So it's really not that bad once you get through the hardy plank itself. Now on the back of your floodlight is another QR code. You guessed it, go on the app. Let's get this thing set up. Another set up a device, smart lighting, solar floodlight detected. Let's connect to your bridge. Pretty simple, right? By the way, you wanna put the battery <laughs> back into the floodlight. And of course you need to do another update. While you're waiting, probably go ahead and put the cover back on the back, which line up two arrows and twist. And it might be advantageous to get you a second battery. Just don't have to worry about that solar. You have a lot of cloudy days. The fact that it's updating now means that you're within plenty of signal strength. I am probably about 40, feet maybe away from the bridge. It just flashed, letting me know the update's almost complete. 
make a group of lighting for your like your front or your backyard side yard whatever and you can name it trash solar floodlight sounds good to me and of course it provides step-by-step -step instructions on the app which is always good ring stuff is usually pretty simple easy to install so that's it so now you take your light and you're simply going to slide and click it's super easy get these set up spread out where you want get the motion sensor on there you can mess around with the settings in the app now let's get the panel set up so this corner of the house is actually a southwestern direction so you can imagine the sun pretty much year round this is the better direction to have it on so what i'm going to do is actually just put the solar panel not too far away and plop it right there <laughs> and a couple of screws we're doing a 330 seconds this time pop in a couple of screws and this has an articulate mount that spins 360 up and down and how this is going to go it's going to slide into the back click in which will allow you to then move this and then tighten up that set screw on that articulating arm so i'll probably just set it like right like there and just get all that sun the second half of the day so do that cord management's really nice you manage all the cords up here you might want to pop in some type of zip tie screw mount here tie everything together or you can just place it on top of here and just remember the plug is underneath so let's get that in there three thirty seconds mark right there The screws for the solar panel are actually a little bit smaller. So you might need to use a different bit. Solid there. Clicks in. A lot of extra cord to manage here. So again, you're gonna to wanna to clean this up. Then you wanna get a little screwdriver, pop this into position how you want it. Once you get it set up, you can control everything through the app. Lights on, lights off, nice soft white there. Brightness setting, up, down, lights on, motion detection, motion alerts, and just like anything with ring, you can just go and select whatever type of setting you want, work on light settings, work on scheduling, snooze. You can even look at device health, kind of see how the battery is doing, battery level 43%. I didn't do a full charge, but you probably should give it a full charge here, solar, fly like the bridge signal. And you can kind of get a feel for how much is being used. You can see that 43%. Check later in the day to just to kind of see how that solar panel is charging once the sun starts hitting it. It's kind of a cloudy day today, but if it's not a cloudy day, it should start charging pretty much immediately and get that thing filled up. Now, solar panels are not the end all be all. So potentially after a few cloudy days, you may want to charge this up and top it off. I mean, it should be good for a long time on the battery, but especially if you have the motion sensor turned down for sensitivity just for the trash can or just when you go outside. Got a nice storm coming in. Sun's about to go down. Come out here, take the trash out, set it to low sensitivity. Walk over here. Perfect. Medium sensitivity is a little bit too much. It just kind of fired off with any kind of wind. <laughs> but low, you actually have to be out here or something walking in front of it, which is great. Plus it charged in the afternoon about 25%, which is good. Well, that's about it guys. Really, I need to go do some cable management, but this is gonna allow you to have that light and that kind of sense of security on a side of a house that's maybe too dark. You can get a handful of these, get them in that whole ring ecosystem and have everything organized and accessible in the palm of your hand with the ring app so that about wraps this video up if you have any other questions at all about this ring floodlight the solar panel or how to set it up it's really like a 30 minute job you just breeze through it get everything up to date firmware up to date get everything installed 
good to go. So thanks so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions or comments, hit them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. Take care of the ones you love and we'll see you in the next review.